Unlimited right. genocide you... on morning people. I hate this so much. <laughs> <laughs> you know those deep right, sea creatures who, you know, with the milky white eyes and like the snaggle yeah. teeth and oh, stuff yes. living in complete darkness? Mm. That's me. I'm looking yeah. out my window and it's completely dark and I'm miserable. Yeah. Dear listener, it's, it's, it's 7 a.m. I, I, I'm just going to kill myself and everybody else. We just I'm, made an American wake up at 7 a.m. to talk about football, uh, okay? Oh, European, I, I am living. Worldwide football, not American football. Before Thanksgiving, mind you, so he's, um, this is a festive mood. This is what I do I'm for you say, people. Oh, fuck. Talk- JT, what would you do? <laughs> I'm just going to say, what would you do if you worked a real job? <laughs> I'm teasing, I'm teasing, I'm teasing. <laughs> oh my god, oh fuck. Oh my god, that's why oh. our boy fucking figured it out. Uh, yeah, but, yeah uh, oh my god. And not, like, We're uh, the sucker. Me and me and you go think of the suckers here <laughs> still fucking waking up at... Uh, what did you call it? The ass crack of dawn? <laughs> I've never heard that before. <laughs> You're welcome to use it. <laughs> oh my gift my to god. you. It's oh, like, if, just for listeners who don't know, JT records like during noon or like around yeah, 1 p.m. Time. And and usually me and Hakeem record at 9, 10 p.m., 11 p.m., right? So yeah. now the roles <laughs> so have been reversed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Let us see yeah. his energy levels now. The well, amount of uh, crack I had to do just to <laughs> be able to pull off yeah, an I'll episode. Fuck. You would have no idea. No, I'm kidding. The I'll, drugs be, are bad. I'll be Hakeem today. But, I'm very tired. <laughs> oh, okay. I can, I can he said it. scratch he said it off it. my list. <laughs> shuk, shuk, scratch, oh, scratch. We are, we are like uh, quite literally the most un-American podcast on planet Earth <laughs> because Thanksgiving is literally tomorrow. Our episode is going to come out on Friday and we are talking about the World Cup. It, that's yeah. just, we're not even touching on Thanksgiving, you know? <laughs> but no, happy Thanksgiving to whoever is celebrating, I guess. Is that okay to say? Am yeah. I allowed to say? It's okay to say thank you to people, it's just even a, though it's, a, it's based it's a, on genocide. Yeah, yeah, it's just a turkey. Day. Like all American holidays, it's been commodified mm. beyond belief. Fairly harmless these days, I would say. But is it like when you really dig deep, like almost every fucking holiday, yeah. somebody like <laughs> yeah. got brutally murdered? Yeah. Like it's, mm. like, even if it's a holiday about like the birth of a saint, I don't know why, at least in Christianity, whenever like a saint is like born, like 70 fucking virgins around him die or like a town is burned down or like a Roman emperor calls, calls for the impalement of like 13 children. <laughs> so like even if you're oh. celebrating the birth of a saint, like a bunch of motherfuckers die it's weird how uh, how morbid uh, the morbid fascination with us marking days when like very mm-hmm. fucked up shit has happened but i guess you can look at it uh, in a in a reverse way you know what is a new year it's celebrating the year that is to come or celebrating that you have survived this year not for example the celebrating that you're getting American older tribal, Madison, <laughs> <massacre. What? laughs> uh, yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> Exactly. Uh, it, it, isn't that the meme about, unironically, isn't that the meme of Thanksgiving? You, you, I was going to say you guys, not you specifically, <laughs> JT, I hope. <laughs> but wasn't it a bunch of American settlers that basically killed some Native Americans? That's the meme. Yeah, I mean, the way it's taught in school is that, you know, the, the settlers came over and or they weren't called settlers they, were, they we call them pilgrims in in the oh yes in mm. and um the they met with the native americans and the native americans showed them how to you know have a good harvest and food <laughs> and stuff and, food. And, they, yeah, <laughs> and they shared a meal together and it was all very wholesome and that mm. was that no mention of you know <laughs> disease blankets and stuff and and yeah. the wiping out of entire populations so yeah good. yet again another I'm, I'm get- uh, strong point of american <laughs> history Exactly right. I'm going to have a, 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 what's it called, a moment of ignorance. I'm going to say something, but I don't know if it's true. I've heard, because I've never bothered to really look into Thanksgiving because I couldn't care less about American, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> but the the meme that I've heard is that it was actually celebrating a massacre and they're giving Thanksgiving, like the, the thanks that they were giving is because they managed to defeat a particular tribe who, for whatever reason, they, they had some beef with. And it was the, the um, pilgrims who basically killed a bunch of Native Americans. That's what I've Well, um, uh, I have to co- correct you on one point there. It, it was not beef, mm. it was turkey that they had. Um, <laughs> 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 Fair enough. <laughs> Boys, I, I'm just going to say, the, the last thing that we're going to do is this fucking photo of, of, of a Thanksgiving meal that I'll send. Why? What's with the... What, What's with the vibe? The vibes are off. No, see. what's with all the orange? Oh, yeah. Why is everything... <laughs> yeah, that, why right? do you put fruits next to your meat? That is strange. Why is there... That what, is... is it called khaki? What's, what's it called in English? The, the fruit to the right of the, the, the fruit turkey. Fruit to the right. We call it khaki. The orange things? Yeah, yeah. I don't know what those are. They look like 
misshapen tomatoes almost, but they're orange, not red. I don't know what those no, there's are. There's grapes next in to Engl- it. There's in turkey. English, b- b- in English, it's called a Japanese persimmon. I have never in my life had a kaki. persimon. Yeah. I, I, it's, hey, it's your culture. They put it next to the fucking turkey. <laughs> <laughs> this is okay. a, this is a very st- sus picture. This looks like it was taken in about 1975 with yeah, a, yeah. With a <laughs> dollar does. store it's film a camera. It's a proper representation, yeah. yeah. But, but still, that, that reminds me of a very uh, important conversation I've had recently. So uh, a big fight. When, the guests, when guests come over, should mm. you put food directly in their plate and then serve that? Or should you mm. fill up the table very nicely with all the foods that you are giving them? And then they can, mm. they can uh, you know take themselves for example the barbecue table. you put on the table, table. you put the salad Both. and a big thing <laughs> table Both. right it's table. so fucking <laughs> so fucking offensive Both. when they're like they limit you how much you need to eat by giving you no, no, everything no, no. exactly in the plate and motherfucker I'm like 250 fucking kilos and I bring my girlfriend that's <laughs> fucking five and a half kilos and this fucking motherfucker gives me the same fucking portions man like that is that is absolutely offensive it's okay for them to first bring out the salads and the, as we call it here meze mm. as like the appetizers mm-hmm. and then afterwards take out the the main course <laughs> but like directly serving it in my plate like you are that cheap seriously you are that have fucking you, cheap i'm sorry you, so am i right you, or no, am i right look you guys haven't been to a, a proper arab you know azima a proper feast what you need to do is you set the table and you put everything on but also you overfill the person's plate to the point that you fear for the structural integrity <laughs> yeah, of the exactly. ceramic <laughs> and then you hand it to the person that's what <laughs> Oh my God. See, my, I my reasoning for the, for the uh, putting it on the table is because I'm very picky and I don't want to like waste a bunch mm. of food. So I'm going to pick like two things that are on the table and eat those. Are, and are you going to break the heart of the of an uh, incredibly elderly and frail oh. old Arab lady <laughs> oh, no. by, by oh, not eating so the stuff that you eat? You look child. You look <laughs> no. skinny, child. You... Eat. Grandma, my stomach is literally on the floor. You look so skinny. Come on, look at those small cheeks. <laughs> oh, my God. Dude, my Habibi, JT, my grandma... Do you know the shit you <laughs> when she would look at you like you're just bone and seam? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, for fuck's sake! Oh man, I'm I'm the I'm the same. We're built fairly yeah. like you know, but uh, yeah, I can't, I can't. Do you know what? Do you know what the biggest the biggest vibe is? Tell me. My grandma, she 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 would uh, whenever I would go over, um, she'd always be like, hey, um, like there'd be all these kids, the kids, the cousins and whatnot, but I would be the one that singled out, and then she'd be like, hey, oh, you're extra skinny, so she'd get, be, bring out this huge piece of lokum. Uh, do you know it's, it's Turkish delight yeah. uh, in English? And I don't know if you've probably seen the the, you, the rest of the world has really small ones. Yeah. In Iraq, we make them like bricks. I don't know why they're <laughs> fucking huge. <laughs> right? And she would hand this fucking thing to me. She'd be like, eat, eat. <laughs> oh, uncritical support to, to cute old grandmas. Yeah. In conclusion, happy Thanksgiving and assorted food uh, holidays from one very exactly. sleepy boy in Texas. Let's get on with Good the show. Boy. Hello everyone and welcome to the 56th episode of the D program, the first one of year two. May there be many more. Speaking mm-hmm. of organizations with many years behind them, today in a very topical manner, we will be talking about the World Cup, FIFA, Qatar, workers falling out of buildings, the power of advertising, of sports, of sports washing, and so much more. So. Before we begin, especially for our American listeners, what even is a World Cup? It's arguably the most attended and watched event of every four years period. 32 countries that manage to qualify by beating out the rest go toe-to-toe in a game of strategy and skill, as some would define it, or a game of hitting balls with legs on grass for (laughs) others. No matter what you think about football or sports in general, this massive event organized by FIFA was supposed to be a month of respite for the world, from politics, infighting, profit, and war, where we compete under the same rules for a symbolic award dedicated to our countrymen. But as you know, or might learn, it, just like anything in this retro system, has become anything but. So boys, welcome to yet another episode. Who would have thunk we'd be talking about sports? Actually, that leads me, are you rooting for anyone in particular? 
All the non-whites. Antarctica. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. America is playing actually. You can you can be proudly nationalistic. Yeah. No, yeah, I'm, I'm good. good. <laughs> I'm good. Yeah. I I've yeah. never watched. Uh no, that's not true. I was at a at like a sports bar pub thing one time and it just happened to coincide with the World Cup and I had no idea. I was like, "Why are there so many people here and why is there beer all <laughs> over the ground?" And then, yeah. you know, people started screaming because it was on the TV and I figured it out. Yeah. But I know nothing about this sport. Full disclosure, I learned everything about it yesterday. Thanks to you, Gopnik. He sent lots of links <laughs> and I watched an episode of the, the Netflix series uh, FIFA Uncovered. And my takeaway is I cannot for the life of me care about football slash soccer it's, it's, and, and it's in your genes it's I know. in your american genes i, like I you want get, to like it you do so not badly. have taste you yeah. don't have taste you can't help it i'm kidding i'm not <laughs> a fan of football either mm-hmm. but but it's such a part of just like yeah. growing up Third here world existence yeah, yeah. yeah that <laughs> I, can't, I like i can't knock it you know it's it's oh, it looks like such a vibe like everyone's having such a great time and i'm like <laughs> I think I would enjoy it if I were there. Like if I were like mm. with all the excitement and the stadium. crowds and stuff, I think I could get into it. But yeah, you know, like watching on TV and they're like maybe I, I maybe can, two goals a game. I'm like, eh. Mm. I can completely understand that. But as someone who has experienced the uh, um, stadium going in the United States, in Boston, and a pr- with a pretty big fucking team, when it comes to baseball, your you people's favorite sport, the yeah, experience yeah. and the vibe also is boring. completely fucking different. Completely, completely different. Not saying that baseball doesn't have its own thing, but just going and watching a football match uh, live, except for, you know, the, the racist psychopaths, they want to skin you alive, or <laughs> if you don't know uh, the, a particular song and you're in the wrong part of the stadium, you will yeah. have, get your legs broken or uh, the cops just throwing gas grenades at you from time nice, to time. Nice. Mm-hmm. And then you like hate it, but at one moment it's like, that's kind of the experience. You can n- go nowhere else but in a football stadium, especially in, in the third world, to like experience, mm-hmm. I guess, what it was like, closest experience to what it was like to be in just like a regular medieval fucking fight, <laughs> you know? <laughs> it's, it's the closest to that, like chanting before going to war and sometimes actually going to war but thankfully only with fists and not with, with swords though nice to get pulled out from uh, from time to time and what did you say Hakim for you're rooting for all the non-whites you know I need to give the the nuance which is by the way if a what's it called a European um, uh, team wins it's still technically rooting for the non-whites because have you seen France's team or <laughs> like all the other ones there's oh wow there's the one French guy okay yeah sure this is a, this is a victory for Senegal and Togo not for France <laughs> this, this is the what what was the it called the the, the theory the this is Hakim Horshu theory fully like Nazis <laughs> exactly. man the French team has no fucking French people <laughs> communists <laughs> And the French Good. team has no fucking <laughs> French people, but for completely different oh, reasons, God. obviously. Mm. There you go, horseshoe theorists. No. When it comes to sport, the, you the, were always right. Exactly. I was just going to say one thing, which is very just to build up on the, the racism uh, comment. I remember it was, I think it was Mesut Özil or one of the one of the uh, Turkish, ethnic Turk uh, players for the German team. And uh, and this was a sentiment shared by pretty much all these people uh, who are not of the ethnic majority of the countries that they represent. And they say, for example, like, when we win, we're German or French or whatever. But when we lose, we're, you know, oh, oh that's a yes. filthy Turk, a filthy Arab, a filthy etc, etc, etc. Yeah. Right. Uh, and with a lot of the criticism that we're hearing around the World Cup, we're going to get into it in a bit. But I fe- I seem pe- uh, it seems that people have forgotten that football is part Possibly the most racist, most homophobic, <laughs> most fucking sexist. These people, are not, like, are, have you ever went to a fucking football, football match, match in your yeah. life? Oh, God. <laughs> it's, it's a mass. It's their massacre <laughs> in Brazil. In Brazil, murders are fucking carried out over this shit. I remember a, a couple of years back. Uh, there was a, a, I think it was between Iraq and Iran, and there was some stupid local fucking federation. Nobody gives a shit about which teams were playing. It wasn't even national teams. And I think like 40 people died. Wow. <laughs> because they didn't. Yeah. Yeah. It's, people take this shit very seriously. And that's why I can't take the criticism seriously, because <laughs> you should know better. 
Yeah, but obviously FIFA mm. like shrugs it off and says, "Oh, but we always wag our finger at those yeah, guys yeah, as yeah. well." So you know, our conscience is clear. Mm. I mean, I come from a part of the world where, quite literally, it is at this point. I don't think it's deniable. The most dangerous derbies on mm. planet Earth, like mm. South America, uh, fucking whatever, like incomparable. Not a good thing, obviously, because those guys over there, especially in Western Europe, have put in regulations to stop uh, insane hooligans which arguably the, the batshit, the right-wing version of it, uh, the right-wing ultras have started in uh, in the UK and then as a subculture have spread all over the world. But because it's not properly regulated, at least on the Balkans, you have some of the wildest motherfucking uh, groups that you can imagine. Not only wildest groups that you can imagine, but groups that directly work with the government and that are a extension of uh, of organized crime as quite literally their, their foot soldiers. It is... Uh, yeah. Uh, the football stadium uh, does not uh, only gather football fans the mm. way many other sports do. Football stadiums gather the most disenfranchised working classes and they mm. give them a, almost always, but not always, thankfully, a, a reactionary outlet through which to uh, express said uh, mm. threat frustrations. Uh, and it usually starts, you know, by you getting becoming a member of a ultras uh, uh, group, and then eventually being recruited into organized crime, and so on and so on, hmm. all yeah. under all the right stuff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, under the flag of uh, of your football club, which at some point you yeah. just stop giving a fuck about. It's more of a flex yeah. than anything mm -hmm. else. But today we are not talking about uh, football in the Balkans, football in, in South America, etc., etc., even though we will be mentioning them. Today we're talking about this particular World Cup. So what is very important to get out of the way in the beginning, and we will touch on it again, but still, is to state that some of the criticism, if not uh, quite a lot of it, leveled, uh, levied against uh, this year's Cup have been pretty straightforward xenophobic bigotry. But mm. this does not mean that we can use uh, Western uh, ignorance and sometimes very targeted racism as a shield against real criticism, which we can have towards both FIFA, uh, the Qatar state, or uh, the position football is in. Uh, today. Uh, Hakim, I believe you could comment on this with the most fervor uh, as someone who is from that particular uh, part of the world, even though, no, if you're Iraqi and if you're from Qatar, that doesn't mean you're the same fucking person. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah. I, know, uh, I know that pain. But yeah, how, how has it felt? Have you felt directly attacked? Have you not? Do you feel like not, uh, okay. it's the There's same old, same old, of, or is there a new twist yeah. to the bigotry? No, no, it's the same old kind of bigotry. It's the same nonsense. It's the same uh, usual racism just turned now that they have an, ooh, we have an excuse to say, to be racist, right? Um, I have not, and, and this is the, the, the experience that I had, because in day-to-day -day life, I don't feel it because people don't care, really. Mm -hmm. In fact, most people are just happy that, oh, you know, well, how neat an Arab country is hosting a um, a uh, World Cup or like a large event, you know, all that kind of stuff, uh, which is, you know, a vibe, why not? But most people don't give a damn. Online, though, you see some crazy stuff. I have never seen more people use the sand N-word slur wow. <laughs> than on Twitter Jeez. in the past two weeks. It is ridiculous. Anything Qatar-related, anything World Cup-related, it is... And by the way, I'm a, I'm a bit of a masochist in that way. I always sort by controversial because I want to see what they have to say. <laughs> and and yeah, you, you end up with you this pervert. Thing, you just sick well, freak. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but honestly, I don't I don't give a damn. And these people will forget about it in a, in a week. Like they forgot about the Iranian protests. Like they forget about fucking. Wasn't there a shooting this week of an LGBT yeah. um, Bar, yeah. like club in, in the US? Right. Which, by the way, again, uh, interesting how a, a literal violence against LGBT people was happening in the US as we speak but it didn't move the focus across it's just so it's stupid I was telling you Gopnik before the, the, the podcast actually um, it's a lot of the criticism you hear is semi-valid at least um, not the racist stuff I mean like oh the migrant worker stuff mm. you know etc et a lot of it is semi-valid but the thing is, it's coming from a not a good heart. They're not. They, it's kind of a, a virtue signal of some sorts. The way I, the example I gave was: imagine when you, if if a Nazi were to tell you, "Oh, capitalism is crushing the people," but if you were to hear this, and it's like, "Yeah, he's right," yeah, yeah. but he, the, the, the place he's wrong, coming from yeah. is is wrong. Yeah. So that's kind of my perspective about this. But we'll go deeper mm, into it. Absolutely. Yeah, I was very happy to see a lot of uh, principled 
uh, uh, Marxists, especially from from the Middle East, uh, taking a, a mm. critical stance towards everything that is happening and being able mm. to at the same time uh, criticize the Western right wing from uh, um, and their perspective on why they are criticizing said World Cup and said country, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But we cannot talk about the Qatari World Cup without talking about the OG organizers, FIFA itself. Let us run you through uh, what this organization was in its infancy, how it developed, and how it became what it is today. Why is that important for a podcast that talks about leftist theory and so on and so on? I thought as I was uh, uh, not only researching, because I I'm surra- where I live, I'm surrounded by football fans, so they keep telling me shit about FIFA and UEFA, mm-hmm. even though I'm falling asleep on the table. But I was like, why is this relevant <laughs> to, to our listeners, especially those that do not give a fuck about the bunch of people uh, hitting a ball across a field well because fifa as a as a as a structure and as an organization is in my modest opinion the perfect representation of how the profit motive can take something pretty innocent pretty great mm-hmm. pretty uh um, something motivated by by passion for uh for sports itself be it art be it the profession something motivated for the for the uh for the sport itself and turn it into a business as and, and as it turns it into a business, turn it, turn it into something uh, horrendous and something that is nowhere even nearly a representative image of what it set out to do in uh, in the beginning and in its infancy. So, speaking of its infancy, FIFA started out as a confederation of many different uh, amateur uh, uh, football associations. Basically, a bunch of people that were exceptionally passionate about football, that wanted to build stadiums, that wanted to to uh, to organize uh, cross regional or cross global uh, football competitions there was absolutely no profit motive it was a little office that they built up from their own funds and from donations and uh, they had the idea of basically bringing this uh, uh, this profession, this sport, this uh, craft that they were very passionate about to the rest of the world. Uh, the first World Cup uh, happened uh, pretty much before uh, World War II and then continued on pretty regularly with a few interruptions during obviously massive amounts of crisis uh, uh, around the world up until, up until to, uh, to this day. Uh, the moment we see FIFA changing as an organization is when um, certain profit-minded individuals who say they were passionate about football, and they might have been, but were much more passionate about money-making, started seeping into the structure of the organization. Uh, Obviously, as markets and as capitalism uh, developed, things became more and more expensive, and organizing these tournaments became more and more expensive. So they started thinking, obviously, with a market mentality, and went ahead with uh, hiring uh, the type of people that I previously mentioned. Again, in my opinion, pretty innocently thinking that, okay, we need to make some money in order to grow this thing, uh, otherwise it's slowly going to die out. When these market-minded people entered the organization, I'm not going to use any names because I don't think uh, they deserve uh, their names to be known, uh, started looking at FIFA as a potential business model. Uh, FIFA, in my opinion, ended up uh, being kind of the Facebook before Facebook, being the internet before the internet, because they said, uh, okay, yes, we can make some money out of tickets, okay, we can make some money out of tournaments, but uh, what is the actual product we can generate that we can offer to companies and to businesses and not to just individual consumers they're like the product is eyeballs the people that are sitting in their stadiums and and when it's when it comes to big matches people that are sitting next behind their tvs and watching the particular match so what can we uh, how can we sell this product which is the eyeball to businesses well we can offer them to market said uh, business to said eyeballs. This started with the first partnership that uh, Coca Cola, that uh, Coca Cola, there you go, that FIFA ever had mm-hmm. with a business, which was uh, Coca Cola. Uh, originally, the idea uh, and the handshake uh, with Coca Cola came from the 
the idea that we would spread football to uh, the developing world, we would help uh, uh, kids with talent in uh, in Africa and Southeastern Asia, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And Coca Cola would come in. We would advertise their products. We would call it uh, FIFA and Coca Cola United, and we will be able to uh, have the funds to spread worldwide. But then when they realize just how much funds they can get from one company, and when other companies with a very smart advertising or saw what they were doing, they came to FIFA and they were like, why not advertise our thing? Put a billboard here on the stadium, put a billboard there. Actually, you had football players playing on the field, cameras are constantly zooming in on them. Why don't you put an Adidas logo on their actual shirt? Why don't you put a Nike logo on their actual shoes? And it slowly turned into, uh, into a advertising run business model the way many many uh, companies today are especially internet companies which led to fifa being filled up by whom at the beginning as we said they let a few leeches in that are motivated by the profit motive but then fifa is starting to make ridiculous amounts of money when an organization starts making ridiculous amounts of money people who are not necessarily passionate about the product, but passionate about making money, start entering the, the the company. Then those people start streamlining it more and more and more in order for that organization to become as profitable as possible. That is how a market corrupts a good, innocent idea into basically a business model. Now, where does the most criticism towards FIFA as an organization come from? So-called allegations against corruption, because they are doing what? What? They are sitting at a table with the representatives of certain countries, certain countries that usually uh, Europe considers authoritarian or bad or ah, waggling my finger, but okay. They sit together with, uh, with certain countries who, and uh, in return for shared influence, shared political power, and more, most importantly, in return for capital, they do what? They allow them to host a world cup. Now, this is the only reason we are using the term corruption for this, which is obviously an awful thing. It, in, during the 1970s, uh, the World Cup, 80s, I think, sorry, was hosted uh, in Argentina while a literal fascist military junta mm -hmm. was governing the, yeah, the yeah. country. That was the first so-called moment of sports washing. But why do I refuse the, the, the hypocritical term corruption? Because the only thing FIFA did is continue its advertising model as it has originally presented it. Why is it when they team up with Coca-Cola that had fucking death squads or Nike mm -hmm. that is, that is uh, uh, slaving away kids in in fucking slave shops uh, mm. why is that a normal regular smart business model that FIFA went towards but when they do the same thing but not for a business but for a country because what is hosting a World Cup if not basically a country buying a massive advertising package from FIFA yeah, in order to show itself to the world. So the only thing FIFA did is like, we are not only going to advertise products, we are open to advertising for a much higher fee, of course, advertising countries. And everybody lost their fucking shit. And that's kind of like the, the first point of FIFA as an organization being corrupted by capital is a great example of how capital corrupts something that is good. The other is uh, is even more ideological because for some reason the, 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 the ideological uh, standpoint that uh, being a shell for uh, corporations, which at this point, many of them are much more powerful than half the governments all over the world, is, is a, a natural extension of just good business strategy. But the second you start interacting in the same manner with CEOs of countries, with presidents of countries, it is seen as the, 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 the pinnacle of, of evil. And it's seen as the pinnacle of evil even more when you're working with the presidents of countries that the people criticizing don't particularly like. Sorry if that was a long rant, but I wanted everybody to kind of be on a <laughs> relatively same page when it comes to what FIFA is. No, that was super Absolutely, helpful. No. That was super helpful, especially for, for big dummies yeah. like me actually learning <laughs> the history. And one thing that uh, I just feel compelled to tell people is the uh, – what's his name? What's his, his last name? Zhao somebody, the Brazilian dude who was the president of, of FIFA for 
quite a long time and kind of started this, you mm-hmm. know, quote unquote corruption process. He looks like if Prince Philip were like 30 percent more evil. That that's that, that is what I gathered from the first episode of the. And of he's the like two meters tall. He's like two meters dude is tall imposing. Well. Yeah, yeah, it is very imposing. <laughs> but he got played by a a midget Swiss guy. So like as I always <laughs> yeah. say, one of the m- most important things in life is drink water uh, when you're drinking alcohol and don't trust midget Swiss guys. That is, uh, <laughs> but by the way, just speaking of which, uh, and this is something that always irritates me. Whenever anybody would bring up a topic of 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 the hosting of the World Cup, you need to realize that exactly like you openly said, these are used for you know oh you represent your country as modern and and oh like everybody can come here, come do business here, oh come for a vacation, all that kind of nonsense. We to use it for as an economic boost. But if you actually look at the list of the countries that have had it that have have hosted the the, the um, World Cup, they none of them have a particularly good human rights record or anything mm. else, right? Um, and I think it's just very telling that, oh, you know, Qatar this year and Russia, you know, in 2018, all of a sudden it becomes an issue. But like in 2010, it was South Africa. All right. In 2002, it was Korea. In, in, in 1982, it was Spain. They literally, they stopped being fascist a week prior, basically. <laughs> yeah. And they're like, hey, yeah, they're open for business, boys. Yeah. <laughs> West Germany in, in like 74 and all that kind of shit. Yeah. So wasn't it Nazi Germany in 36? No, they didn't have the cup yet. That was the Olympics. Oh, okay. Yeah, the first that's World right. Cup, yeah, I yeah. think, was in, in Uruguay, yeah, the, the, the 1930s. Yeah, the Olympics are like the that. first example of so-called sports washing. What uh, uh, critics like to call, you invite the world to a very sterilized mm. version of what your country mm-hmm. looks like for a particular uh, mass world event, in this case, sports hence the word sports washing and it was initiated very actively by nazi germany during the olympics in 1936 which were supposed to create an image of deutschland that was uber uber alles but uh um, when you really dig into it like every single country is going to be doing sports washing like every single country Mm -hmm. even uh, like something as mainstream as modern germany i guess is going to end up presenting only like the the flashiest face that it has to the to the world audience when the when the world audience uh, ends up uh, watching the world cup this like competition of uh should we do it in this country because it's uh, seven out of ten authoritarian versus the other country where mm-hmm. it's five out of ten authoritarian uh, is not cared for by the market. FIFA is run as basically a student government if anybody was a member of or you could even ironically even maybe a, a syndicate or a union. You have the representatives of the different uh, football unions of the of the world from Asia all the way to South America and North America and they all come in and they give their votes they have their president who ends up voting for them Uh, whoever uh, has uh, uh, the most alliances instead inside of this uh, student government (laughs) inside of this uh, FIFA organization is going to be the one who can define where the cup is going to be hosted who's going to get money where are we going to build this or that etc etc and obviously this this tends to work really really decently this is a syndicalist approach but it uh, doesn't because again we have the profit motive so if i for example am from uh, trinidad and tobago and i have a lot of power in the in the caribbean when it comes to uh, football i go to the president of fifa and i tell him i'll give you votes but in return i want a bigger piece of the budget from which i end up skimming more and more and less and less ends up actually in the pockets of football players and uh, in the pockets of football fans that's why it's it's uh, such an important case study because it's one of the the most capital rich and arguably even one of the most powerful companies on planet earth and yet it is a a a prime example of how the market motive just simply does not work for anything except uh i don't know consumer goods to an extent sports being a great example of that we could talk about art we could talk about about plenty of other things but uh it's it's constantly shooting itself in the foot by being profit uh profit run no beautifully said beautifully said 
Uh, so, uh, with that, with all that being said, though, the current World Cup, which is the one with, with all, all the hubbubalub, as I, I said, <laughs> hubbubalu, something, I don't know what the fuck. Yeah. Really, hub- hubbubalu is the correct one. Hubbubalub is what you said. Uh, and we're absolutely okay, putting okay. that on a hat. <laughs> all right. That, that we are. Yes. Well, all the hubbubalub is about this, uh, what's going on in Qatar at the moment. Um, what is the real issue? I'm going to speak about objectively the real issues in Qatar right now. And then I'm going to talk about the virtue signaling that lots of, you know, uh, companies that, for example, put the, you know, they, they put the pride flag on their Twitter handles, uh, like Twitter icons in the Europe and North America, <laughs> yeah. but not in any other region. <laughs> that that yeah. kind of stuff. <laughs> so in Qatar currently, first of all, it is not the democracy. That's the first. And by the way, not even, like, I, I will extend this criticism to all the quote unquote European democracies too. They're not democracies either in the real sense of the word. But um, in uh, the old term, yeah, it's not even democratic in the least. It is basically a royal uh, family that uh, has control over every aspect, just like the Emirates and Saudi Arabia and all these other countries, yeah. right? They have some semblance of um, a participation of only their own population within the government, but it's still kind of limited. They barely have a population to begin with um they're i think like 400,000 qataris altogether so that's aside from the point but that's the first thing so the authoritarian nature of the fact that there isn't any democratic participation number one number two is because of the small population and the la- and the vast wealth of the country they've decided that rather than you know have their own people working because there's no not enough people there's a severe sh- rape, labor shortage in that case they'll import uh, migrant workers and they'll have them under a sponsorship system in which basically if a migrant worker were to come to your country, the only way that they can stay and work and do anything is if a employer uh, or somebody else sponsors, quote unquote, sponsors them. Um, now, on paper, this is just to like for legal bureaucratic nonsense. But uh, what it means in reality is that this particular employer, much of whom, by the way, aren't only Qatari companies, a lot of them are international companies and yeah. conglomerates as well. They have full control over the person. They, t- they confiscate their passports, they uh, underpay them or they uh, deny wages or they basically just outright lie about their um work uh, requirements they overwork them past legal limits and a lot of the time there wasn't any minimum wage etc etc you become in, identityless you can even like i'm not yeah. saying that happens even though i kind of there is proof that it happens but you there's a random sri lankan dude with no passport no id and the police mm. finds him like fucking shot at the back of the head somewhere on the mm. highway like that is never going to be resolved absolutely yeah. ever like that's a like literally like as if you found a cat a dead cat on the street <laughs> like there's nothing you can yeah go with with this guy that's yeah. like from village seven in uh, like the sri lankan yeah. jungle you know and you're all the way over in qatar it's fucking super fucked what happens to these yeah people. exactly yeah. right um so that's number one number two they have other you know legal uh, again as i mentioned it's, a, it's an it's not a um what's it called a liberal democracy so their general system of governance is entirely different their approaches to uh, civil liberties are entirely different um, and as a result, uh, there's rightful criticism you can make of that, obviously. Um, the first and foremost is the fact that Qatar is an artificial country. It's not a real country. Or, uh, Qatar is a, uh, before was part of the British Dominion. It was a, a colony of the British, uh, and they became independent, like within living memory in 70 or 71, something like that. They actually became properly independent. Um, and uh, ever since then, they've just kind of existed, just like Kuwait, for example, as a uh, outpost of Western capital within the Arab world who also has a comprador uh, bourgeoisie ruling it through the semblance of some royal family. That's kind of how, how yep. it works. Um, uh, in, in essence, what, what that means is it's part of a much larger nation, the Arab nation. Um, so none of the reforms that you could possibly make within the country on an individual scale would really matter unless there was unity with the rest of the Arab world, number one, and number two, there was socialism. But this is, we're getting ahead of ourselves here. Um, the criticism that they've gotten in regards to their migrant uh, laws, in regards to uh, civil liberties, etc., etc., et are valid. The difference is, though, this criticism only like began once they started their bid for um, the World Cup. And then when they got it, and then people are saying, oh, corruption or not corruption, I don't give a shit. Oh, every single bid prior had some level of corruption that played part in it, I, and I, I personally don't care. The thing, though, is a lot of the companies, for example, that have representatives that basically made statements about Qatar right now, before had employed uh, migrant laborers within Qatar and made record profits 
off of their labor and had never, not once, criticized or, or, or commented or went to the relevant authorities within Qatar to tell them, hey, um, are we going to do anything about these, the, these horrible labor laws? In fact, they did the exact opposite, like capitalists always do. They entirely benefited directly from cheap labor without mm -hmm. strong uh, protections, etc., etc. Um, so that's the first uh, and most important thing. A great sorry. extension, sorry, a great extension of what basically they do even when the World Cup isn't present. Like the same company will create a campaign campaign about, I don't know, something fucked up is happening in China and then have a completely different marketing campaign and sell the same product in China. But to you in Yankee land, they're telling you they are fighting the, the oppression over there. And over there, they're telling you they're fighting oppression over here. It's uh, as long as they're, dr they're driven by capital. So they will operate in any market with any system whatsoever, as long as it's fucking profitable. And Qatar yes. is one of those places. Exactly right, yeah. And as a result of this, by the way, the, the big meme is, or it's not a big meme, it's because it's, 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 part of it happened, we just don't know how to the extent. Many people have died as a result of the construction of the stadiums, which is a rightful criticism to make. One death is one, two, is one death too many, right? But we don't know if it's 300, we don't know if it's 5,000, all, all of it is kind of sketchy. We don't know exactly how many, right? But the thing is that it's kind of strange that this criticism is leveled against Qatar, when the same happened, in, same thing happened in Brazil and pretty much every other country that has hosted the World Cup. There's quite a few, at least several dozen deaths as as a result of these of uh, stadium buildings, particularly in third world countries. Right? Um, that doesn't absolve Qatar of what they did, obviously. But the thing is, uh, I'm I'm moving on to the part where it's a lot of virtue signaling. They're saying like, oh, this is a really bad thing, but they never gave a damn when all the other countries did it. Right? Now, when you move on to actually the the corporate side of these. They also still don't care. They're still they're still advertising Budweiser and all these. Use if you if you've been watching the games, you see Budweiser's. That McDonald's is a major sponsor, <laughs> like, as well. Um, there's Coke and all this kind of nonsense. I remember I saw the fucking the stupid messy uh, Coca Cola commercial, um, and on and on. My point being is that. Even though there is the BBC will be like, oh, we're outraged. We're not going to air the, the opening ceremony, despite the fact that uh, BBC had like 30 staff or something that are in the Qatar reporting directly and have gotten bonuses from the Qatari government <laughs> for reporting on it. So like they're, they're uh, what's it called? The, the, the hypocrisy, they're getting paid by the same people that they're criticizing. And the criticism is so um, defanged and pointless. And not only exactly. pointless, and but it's always been even since Argentina. Yeah. It's always been no matter how much like you point fingers, the profit motive is so intense because there's so much money to be made off of the World Cup that they yeah. can be like the Qataris if they if they hang two motherfuckers off the goalpost and say that mm. these are uh, the the goalkeepers, they would still fucking scream <laughs> it everywhere because there's too fucking yeah, exactly. much money to be made. They, they they would wear a shirt that says oh you know like get the new Happy Meal some fucking bullshit right yeah. <laughs> <laughs> some macabre fucking uh, advertising but that's the point they don't give a shit right but when you actually move on to to the the, the um, general shit fest that was the world cup like it is in every other country i mentioned prior the brazilian fucking um child prostitution rings that they didn't do anything about by the way or the the they built a fucking they built a stadium in the middle of the amazon that was used for one game it cost like 12 yeah. billion dollars and then it was never used again and by the way they bulldozed like a chunk of the fucking amazon to build that fucking thing mm. right and again and, and the, the criticism is just it's my point being and this is i think all of our points it's when it comes to capitalism no criticism is genuine right if there's profit to be made the best you're going to get is some shitty virtue signaling exactly like fucking you know the 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 lgbt pride month only in some of the twitter handles uh, not not every region that's the best you're going to get out of capitalism if you want a actually principled stance then it needs to be from a socialist perspective and the socialist perspective is uh, football and all sports should be something that people do for the love of the sport, okay, and for the development of the sport, not to sell fucking shoes or coke exactly. or God knows what else, all right? Or, or, or countries, the pink or, con or yeah, whole or countries as a product. <laughs> it's fucking, <laughs> exactly. we managed to commodify a country that is incredible. That is like, yeah. wow, my fucking God. Sorry, <laughs> it's just incredible to me. A whole country as a product pitched on a, we take a whole country and we pitch it as a product on a green field where like 11 versus 11 people are kicking balls at each other <laughs> and 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 we and we kill fucking 5000 motherfuckers to build the green field where people are shooting balls at each other it is it is a profit motive works no it, it works that if that is what working looks like then i'm the hardest working man on planet earth <laughs> yeah pretty much yeah jeez 
But yeah, uh, and just to, like I'll do a very quick rundown of the the geopolitical region and and, and uh, or like the the situation around Qatar, and then we can go into. Yeah, I wanted the before you start. I wanted to ask you. Yeah. Uh, so uh, is the vibe between Iraqis and Qatar like uh, Serbs and Croatians, or you guys like like yeah. each other or some shit? Or is there I like think... Middle Eastern like except obviously Iraq Iran? I know you're you guys are shit there, <laughs> but with <laughs> uh, with the others, is there like some like. Um, Mimi level beef or is everybody relatively chill it depends i think look every population is chill with the rest of the population if that makes sense right of course but they're anti-governments yeah. frequently yeah i know but i almost, know that's what i meant yeah. that's what mm-hmm. i meant yeah yeah i think it's uh, probably yugoslavia is the same where everybody's like oh we're just you know we're yeah, a big exactly. we're part of a bigger whole right but oh fuck that government that's kind of how it is in the arab world as well but, but Qatar from in particular I, I, yeah they're four hundred thousand motherfuckers. Yeah. it's a yeah, it, it's a this is like it's one sixtieth the population of texas yeah basically yeah, yeah. yeah. but like a it's million one suburb in baghdad it's, 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 it's one suburb in baghdad <laughs> it's, so. it's like just the size of the russian mob man like literally mm. i mean it is yeah. it's basically qatar is when you really look at yeah. it like mafia bosses that said they're kings and they have like yeah. 400,000 uh, citizens and then a million and a half uh, workers and western backers and they're just uh, chilling on their throne yeah no and uh, but overall like the, the general geopolitical position is it doesn't matter but uh, there was a bit of beef between them and the rest of the gulf states and then they kind of resolved but there's still some tension that didn't play that didn't take uh, any uh, you know like large role within the world cup itself um neither did the internal politics for the most part um, i don't know if that's to give them credit or not or maybe it's just again just a like a paint of coat uh, a paint of coat a coat of paint <laughs> 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 that they've that they've uh, painted over but they've taken some criticism to heart and they've made some changes now the only change that would matter is i'm not I, i'm not i was gonna get bleeped so i'm not gonna say it but <laughs> <laughs> like at least something at least something something like a minimum wage was instituted at least you know like that's kind of fucked up that they didn't exist before but hey it's a step in the right direction um um, and if you're wondering, oh, but we, blah, blah, as a principled Marxist, the only real solution, again, is something that will get me bleeped. So <laughs> something, something, agitate, something, something, educate, something, something, revolution, and then something, something, unity. That's kind of <laughs> what, what, what we need uh, in, in this area. Uh, as for, again, there's a lot of, as the resident, um, uh, uh, how do Americans say Muslim? They don't say it with an S. They say it with an Muslim, S. With a Z yeah. for some reason. Muslim, Muslim. Muslim. Yeah, which always, which always irritated me. I don't know because that's not, not even in Arabic. <laughs> that's not how it's said, right? Uh, Islam. <laughs> Anyways, as the resident Muslimic, <laughs> I have to, I have to, uh, uh, like comment on the again, the way that the uh, legal system in Qatar works and the perception of people of the way it works what actual Islamic legal systems, how they're supposed to work, and also um, who's actually carrying out the, 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 the injustice, if you want to use that word. All these things get so nuanced, it's going to go on for like four hours. So I'm just going to say a few things. The first thing is um, the people who are actually um, not uh, treating migrant workers like shit and not paying them and whatnot are individual companies. Right, and individual companies don't have religions. Right, <laughs> their religions profit and capital. That's why. <laughs> that's why. Again, uh, well, this will be a discussion for another day. But yeah, if you were truly religious, you'd be anti-capitalist. But anyways, the the patchwork, the patchwork. Like I don't know what they were thinking. The uh, you have to have seen the videos. Even you, JT, have have to have seen the videos mm. where because they they wanted to inflate just how many people have come to the actual cup, and then uh, they would like get random random dudes off of the street and they would like dress them up as in like the jerseys of a of a particular country. And I mean, I know for example, Germany is a very diverse place, uh, <laughs> and I try to uh, you know I always drive through the red light when I'm driving my car because I'm. Caught Blind. I am. <laughs> I'm kidding, obviously. But now nah, it was. It was so fucking obvious. Uh, for example, the, the recording. Oh look, uh, the British are screaming. It's coming home. It's coming home. And there's like mm. a guy next to them on the speaker shouting, "It's coming home!" And then the guys are obviously from Qatar. They're like, "Home, come, come!" No, and there's like <laughs> jumping, dressed in the, in like English jerseys and shit. They've been filling up the the stadiums by. Uh, there is proof for this. By like. Uh, 
hanging out tickets uh, to to locals, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, so that it looks more full, more attended. Mm. But attendance has been slowly increasing. Uh, there might have been uh, a misestimation in the first few days of the cup that people are not coming because it is uh, in Qatar. It's difficult to travel to, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, even though infrastructure was created for the cup. Uh, but no, nah, just because in the first few days there have been uh, shitty matches mostly so people didn't mm. want to pay good money for that but then the the so-called hotel infrastructure is very oh, funny yeah. you you got like three four hundred dollars per night for like these plastic tents in which you have like uh, just a, a wooden bed and uh, like they didn't even take off the plastic off of the off of the mattress it it feels very uninspired it feels very much like it's run for profit mm. and not because yeah, you're yeah. actually passionate about football but now nah, it's a it's a whole mess but my favorite by far my favorite is everyone's seen this guy but at this point is how they were like uh, they probably forgot how to put certain things for like the millions of tourists that are coming in this as Hakim said very uh, let's call it underpopulated for its size country mm. so yeah. they were like how do we show people where the metro is or the parking mm. is or whatever <laughs> oh, yeah. so they have these these um, these people I don't know if they're migrants or locals I'm guessing migrants sitting up on these very tall chairs with like point uh, massive point signs just literally shouting metro to the left metro <laughs> to the left or parking spot 50 spots left and then somebody parks and he's like for like 10 hours a day he's just shouting wow. parking spots 22 left <laughs> parking spots 22 left it is it is absolutely incredible it's like looking at this alternative world but even that is not my favorite my favorite are actually the uh, Qatari citizens which you can see like their their smile from from ear to ear fuck their government but they seem like lovely people that when they see all mm. of these camera guys running around everywhere and uh, and recording they're just so mm. sociable and they don't give yeah. a fuck they run into the the the, mm. the, the, the recording <laughs> screen they're like oh friend where are you from and the guy <laughs> says like Puerto Rico they're like Puerto Rico what Puerto Rico where Puerto Rico and then the guy's <laughs> trying to be nice and he's explaining where Puerto Rico is like, oh great oh okay Puerto Rico nice Puerto Rico nice and they like <laughs> hug and they're like want to uh. eat food and he's like sir I am recording so like, no no come we eat food you record later it's, <laughs> it's, 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 it's so fucking wholesome uh. and, it, uh, it, and it's uh, and it's unfortunate that it's overshadowed by all this all this uh, baggage, but uh, let's let some, you know, human light can uh, shine yeah. through the yeah. darkest of, uh, of desert fogs, I guess. Honestly, uh, the, the my, my favorite part about it is, uh, I don't know, again, GTA, you probably haven't seen it. Um, I watched the, the opening match, right? Mm -hmm. uh, Qatar was versus Ecuador and Qatar lost, obviously, but they've never had a presence as a football, you know, they've never been good, a good team. Um, so it's not surprising, but I find this weird thing where it's like everybody is, everybody was like, oh, no, no, they've bribed every team so that Qatar would win and they, they, they lost their first match. And now there's like this weird conspiracy theory within a conspiracy theory, which is like, no, 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 they're playing 5D chess I, I, because they yeah. know people would say that they bribed. <laughs> so they intentionally lost the first game, but they're going to win everything else. So then <laughs> and that, those wow. wins will all be bribed. <laughs> I'm like, OK, um. <laughs> fine. Oh man! Did you see uh, Saudi Arabia beat Argentina? Yes. What the fuck? That was what, fuck what world are we? <laughs> what, what world are we in? Jesus it Christ! Is. It was a good game. That too. was after 35 <laughs> matches of Argentina not having lost a single one. Mm. Correct mm. me if I'm wrong, mm. audience. Then this was the like first that, one yeah. they lost. I, Messi looked like he was gonna off himself. Like that was like mm. what the fuck? I was in a cab. <laughs> I was in a cab mm. coming back from work while the game was playing, and I enter, and the cab driver is listening to it uh, on the on the radio. It's like full sound, mm. and I enter and he doesn't even say hi he turns around he's like Saudi Arabia is beating them I'm like what is going on beating who oh my god did another war start he's like no 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 they're beating the Argentinians and I'm like oh what how are they beating them? he's like they're beating the Argentinians he's just shouting at me and I'm like okay can you drive he's like yes but they're beating the Argentinians it was, it was an incredible moment it's a mini heart attack Absolutely though wild. Saudi Arabia beating someone it makes me think of other stuff you know yeah um, <laughs> uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna do a quick round of hypocrisy just for the memes because people probably don't know the Americans don't know mm -hmm. um a lot of people are like oh yeah the migrant workers blah blah slave labor all that kind of stuff almost every country on earth who's going particularly the uk which is known uh their kits that they wear are made by basically slave labor in thailand where they're paid like two two cents on the dollar uh for for uh, the kids and nobody's criticized this or nobody's also criticized the or like people have only pointed out the hypocrisy really but the criticism criticism arose only as a reaction 
to what was already being said against Qatar, which I find very funny. Again, just leads back into the virtue signaling aspect. The alcohol bans was like, oh, you can't drink. No, you can. You just can drink in specific sec sections. And if you're absolutely shit faced, you have to sit in a sober area so you can sober up and then they let you go because otherwise <laughs> you're going to go and start fights. Because like I told you, people fucking riot. <laughs> when they, as, uh, as, as, a, as the uh, resident drinker, sorry for interrupting you, and JT is also the resident yeah. drinker, but let me just say, the, I have been to Boston two months ago. <laughs> I am 100% sure it was more difficult to get alcohol on a stadium in Boston and outside of the stadium mm. than it probably is in is in Qatar. So the, the yeah. alcohol fucking comment is very cringe. Sorry, please continue. Yeah, and not only that, but the, the alcohol ban inside stadiums is was in France and Spain and Portugal and Scotland and, and various and, Latin and not, America. But even if it was banned in the whole country, like, like again, as somebody very mm. passionate about alcohol, mm. your culture does not allow alcohol, you will not drink alcohol here. Okay, bruv. Mm. Okay, you will not yeah. eat pork. Okay, like I, what? Yeah. Like okay, like wh I'm, I'm not that fucking insane bit, that yeah. I will lose my mind. Like <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with like? Yeah. I can't. By the way, I have I I know several. Uh, I have some uh, friends who some English friends who have been there, and you know how the English drink. Mm -hmm. And these motherfuckers have been getting shit faced. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. What, I don't know what people are talking. About. That's number one. number two. Another thing is there's been some like token you know Twitter celebrity or politician like boycotts quote unquote. Mm -hmm. Uh, saying, oh, we're not even going to go to Qatar this time, just mm, out of, because we're so, you know. Yeah. Uh, but a lot of them also, like, uh, what was the guy? Uh, there was some English singer that I don't remember the name of because I don't care. Huh. But uh, he was like, oh, Qatar on their human rights record. I'm not going to show up. Meanwhile, get tickets to my Israeli show. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right, so, so uh, yeah, you have, you have this kind of stuff, right? Something which I find, like, I don't want to open up the can of worms, but there seems to be a much bigger fuss that was made originally about the LGBT aspect mm -hmm. than there was about the migrant worker aspect, which kind of shows, I think, a lot of, like, liberal-minded, especially journalist types in Western Europe or Western media seem to put, like the comfort of a LGBT middle class, upper middle class tourist, because working class LGBT people can't get on a fucking, yeah. God knows what, $2,000 flight and then go and get a $10,000, you know, uh, hotel room and go to a team, uh, go watch a, a match that costs like $1,000 to get the ticket. I don't know what the prices are, but you know what I mean? All this stuff is very expensive. And to these liberal minded journalists, it seems that the comfort of an upper middle class or upper class LGBT person was more important at first than literal lives of migrants <laughs> that like you know falling to their deaths also, from these so i, I uh, uh, uh -huh. wear, wear a t-shirt with uh yeah. pride flag and go to a football stadium in 98 percent of football stadiums <laughs> you will have your legs broken you will, and fed to you. <laughs> you will die the, the, you will, you will die like 100 percent. 100 percent. so Oh, because <laughs> Qatar uh, okay. uh, LGBT rights uh, we like particularly have to focus here yes we should focus on LGBTQ acceptance in football stadiums mm -hmm. Worldwide, okay. Mm. <laughs> why, why did you remember yeah. only today? That because the, the, these are the most <laughs> fucking homophobic. No, because the sand <laughs> people don't like the gays. Yeah. That's why. Do, Not because yeah, the you, the pale looking ones. It's it's obvious. People forget that the day that England lost the last World Cup, the, the match that they lost that day, the next week afterwards, uh, um, domestic violence uh, reports increased by forty percent. Wow. People forget yep. this shit. Yep. Yeah. yeah. This is like, again, football fans, they're known for <laughs> not being the, the best examples of humanity. So uh, I really don't have too much more to say. I actually have a story. This wasn't football. This was a hockey game. I'm not going to say exactly where I was, uh, but it wasn't here. I was going to uh, say it's a little hot uh, for hockey there, ain't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. It wasn't here. It was I was visiting, uh, and uh, I wasn't going to a hockey game. I just happened to be in a place while a hockey go game was ongoing, and I get get on a bus. And I'm like, hey, this is a little bit packed, uh, like you know. And I notice all these people are drunk, and you have these huge fucking drunk. Uh, gangs of fucking you know, <laughs> these white guys yelling and I'm like okay maybe they're just, just they're just having a bit they had a bit too much to drink they're having a good time and they're like circling me and I'm like oh, uh -oh. oh I'm in danger <laughs> <laughs> shit yeah but yeah, so I tried talking to them, you know, tried to reason my way out of this, <laughs> right? And what, this dude built like a brick shit house. I swear to God, him and two buddies literally lifted me up like a cartoon character and threw me out of the fucking bus. What? What? Oh my Why? God. Yeah. yeah. Because, and then they said several racial slurs. Uh, and I was like, ah, okay, yes. Yeah. Uh, and then they started throwing bottles. Oh my God. 
<laughs> you are yeah, far more a, patient than I am. Yeah, and I was like, no, and the reason I was like, like I can, I could do something, but I'm in a foreign country. There's right? thirty and fucking I'm here. football uh, hockey yeah. hooligans around you now, nah, man. Just yeah, I'm like, I'm right. not gonna uh, fucking, I'm not. Yeah, no, I'm not doing this. And do you, do you want to know the best part about it? There was b- behind the bus because they know that they get violent behind the bus. There, uh, every bus there's a a, pol- uh, a police car yeah, that like yeah. follows the bus, Same here. and they saw everything that was happening, and they didn't do shit. And I remember I made eye contact. With the cop in the car and i like i you know the the universal signal of i uh, an open palm yeah. like hand and i yeah, point to him and i point to the, the fucking bus <laughs> yeah i'm like my guy and he just shrugs his shoulders at me. <laughs> oh my god and do you know do you know that um this was in a small um this was in a small town uh so maybe people will be able to actually find the story or not but there was a kid who um, had, what, came back from some birthday party or something, and he wanted to get a rainbow on his face for the for just the the, the uh, what's it called um the the, the fa- face painting shit that kids like yeah yeah right uh, and he he got a, a rainbow on his face and they thought that this was an LGBT oh, symbol man. and one of these drunk so kids it, hit yeah. hit the kid yeah it's kind of fucked up to. T- <laughs> One guy accidentally wear, wore an like uh, he just bought like a T-shirt from H and M, and he put it yeah. underneath like his bigger jersey, and he went to a match. I think it was in Belgrade, uh, and mm. he got really hot in the jersey, so he took off the jersey, only to realize mm. that the random sh- T-shirt he had put on just had a massive American flag on it. <laughs> <laughs> he, oh my lord! Like, and he was mm. like in the middle of like the the hooligan fucking part of the the stadium mm. so he must have had a lot of fun but my f- funniest yeah. thing about right wing especially in my part of the world right wing um uh, football fans is uh, when you look at their like uh, football sub club names uh, like mm. half of the stadiums that not 85 percent of the stadiums they go to were built by the communists their teams mm-hmm. would founded by communists usually like uh the red army stadium uh CSK, mm. partisan yeah. like names yeah. that are extremely communist but they couldn't change the name forever so for mm. example in belgrade you have like a team whose main symbol like looking over the whole stadium is a massive red star the team is called mm. red star or it's called partisan like the partisan communists and mm, then yeah. and then the sub name of the group is like uh, chetnik or 88 or totenkopf and you are red star totenkopf oh my god <laughs> like yeah. how how does that work in your fucking brain <laughs> standing on literal cement yeah. built by our great socialist mm. forefathers zig heiling at some guy uh, yeah. throwing yeah, bananas at him fucking. it's it's yeah. it's 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 a painting to me it is mm. it is it's it's a painting i was gonna say the final thing about my my experience was at first i went and i spoke to the person i knew in this place i was like yeah this was an experience that i had uh, and they're like oh yeah are you okay i was like yeah i'm fine nothing happened but what the fuck's going on he explained to me uh you know like every like couple of months or whatever there's a game and these people just kind of come out in droves and these are regular people that you know like you see in the grocery store yeah. and they're completely normal people but the second a game comes around they become like this uh, and we drove past the, the the stadium and there was a massive ss um Jeez. What's it called? Uh, banner? Spray painted. Oh. <laughs> yeah, no, no, not banner. Spray painted onto it. And I asked him, I was like, oh, wow. Like, they, they're they even defacing this. He's like, no, no, that's been there for years. Oh, <laughs> I was my like, God. oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's in swastikas everywhere in yeah. Western Europe, in Eastern Europe, yeah. everything. Yeah. Mm. I love, like, sometimes, like, one football club will, like, write their, their name and then a swastika underneath it. And the other football club mm. would come and they would spray paint over the other football name and write their name in a different color, but they would leave the swastika. Leave the swastika. <laughs> mm. Oh my god. <laughs> so, so you could see like a wall with like 70 things haven't been painted over, uh, but the swastika is like fresh from like 1992, wow. you know, and it's still left yeah. over. Absolute yeah, classic. Cool. I used to, in college, I used to get uh, just uh, drunk and just uh, go spray paint over swastikas like all night. It was nice. one of my favorite Chad. things to do. Absolutely, Chad. Absolutely, always Chad. Very fun. But now there's cameras everywhere. And even if you spray paint yeah. over something like a swastika, you can still get charged for Fun, vandalism, yeah, for which is yeah. so fucking dumb. Yeah. And, that, and you can get up to a year. So that's why wow. everybody stopped doing that. Yeah, it's very fucked. 
Uh, but less swastikas because they don't paint them, but nobody paints over the old ones, you know. Huh. It's, uh, yeah. All right. Uh, to to finish up, and this is kind of the final point, and these are the two take home points you need to, uh, three take home points. FIFA and all other massive sporting institutions are rotten to the core. They're just fucking capitalist hellscapes used for advertising. So this is none of this should be surprising. Number one. Number two. Uh, migrant issues and labor law issues and all this kind of stuff are endemic parts of capitalism in general. So this is not just something with the, you know, oh, now the World Cup is over. Um, not only Qatar, but basically every, almost every country on earth has some issues with, uh, including the, oh, respectable, developed, uh, liberal democracies who, who import like migrant workers themselves and underpay them and don't pay them a minimum wage. And Southern US is known for this shit, for example, mm. right? Um, where they snuck across the border and whatnot. In Germany, where Vietnamese people are just kind of flown in to do you know etc etc you know all this fucking yeah. nonsense right so i know that this is bullshit um and the uh, the most important thing is the next one of the next countries that's making an actual bid for the world cup is israel for the oh, next man. world cup so uh, i do expect the same you know sensible liberals to <laughs> be making a fuss about that but i'm highly doubtful <laughs> that that's going to be coming all right oh, uh, but yeah so um Go kick a ball around, have a great time, but, you know, <laughs> know that at, at the core of this sport, for some reason, um, is when there's no class consciousness, it is just the most fucking rotten thing on earth. And finally, of course, actually, the, this is the, the, the final point. All the countries and all the businesses um, that are, you know, doing this liberal, what's it called, uh, um, criticism, at the same time have made record profits off of the same lax labor laws or lack of labor laws. And not only Qatar, but almost every other country on earth, from Thailand to Peru, they don't care. This is all about the profit, profit motive and capitalism is at the root cause of this as well, like just as it's with most things in our current world. So, um, yeah. Revolution. <laughs> I don't know who said it. I don't know who said it, but the people most disappointed with Qatar holding the well, this year's World Cup were businesses operating in Qatar. Yeah, basically. foreign businesses, because mm. then they would have to. You get the point. <laughs> with that being said, this has been the program. I'm Hakim. I'm JT. And I'm Yugopnik. Israel World Cup 2026. Here we come. Oh my God, no. We're going to play football with Palestinian heads. Oh my God. <laughs>